Do you have any questions? Okay. Um, so last time uh, we have examined uh, visual uh, sensory system. We examined Gestalt laws, and today uh, I'm going to continue with memory and other issues that are related to human-computer interaction. Uh, we have two years this stereo. And we also have capability of localization. So inter, inter ear difference localization uh, is possible. So our uh, hearing system is quite advanced. And it is faster and it is actually the fastest one than a visual system and visual system and tactile system. So the signals reach the brain and get processed much sooner than the signal that we C for responding. The interval is very famous, although this can go like 15, 15,000, not 22,000. 22,000 is very high number. Uh, our ears, this is the hearing part, our ears have active filtering uh, capability where we can filter only the things that we are interested uh, we can omit uh, the sound that we are not interested such as in a multinational cocktail party okay you can listen to a particular two people uh, talking to each other if you want to so uh, but if you are recording via microphone, uh, that is not possible. This is extremely interesting for people who wear uh, and complain that uh, they don't get the same original uh, hearing response uh, similar to their. So sound particularization. Uh, possible to open. Um, if sound is going to be used, if sound is going to be used for user interfaces, we have Interesting implications. Here are the summary. We use sound for error or status information, such as something goes wrong, you blow the sound boink or something like that, beep, pop. And for the status, for example, the plane is about to crash. So you will have a constant beep in indicating that there is a fatal situation. Or something wrong with the engine, something wrong, wrong with the timer, something wrong with the computer or hard drive. 
the system, the industrial equipment. So there are certain sounds that that are related to uh, status in addition to error. When we are associating status with the sound, it is usually it is usually something wrong. So uh, status that is requiring attention is associated to uh, associated to the sound, such as beep beep beep beep beep. So that means attention. Or less frequent beep, beep, space, beep, space, beep, space. What does it look like? It looks like battery is about to die. Or something informative, you need to act. But it is not an error, it's an information, but you need to do something. So in those cases, sound is interesting. And that is crucial when the equipment is not the main screen. We have our main screens, like our laptops, our sometimes telephone, uh, but if the equipment, if the computer is, if the system is not the main screen, like a climate control or a, te or a secondary telephone or a router device or a smart home appliance, then uh, you don't normally keep looking at. So the only, only mechanism to communicate with the user is the sound and Blinking lights, because blinking lights are visible uh, by our peripheral vision. If something is blinking here, I can see it. If something a message saying that caution or extreme hot, I don't see it. In order for me to see it, it has to be blinking because it directly goes to my peripheral view. Sound is also interesting because I cannot ignore it. Sound is additional to the interfaces. It cannot be the only output, meaning that if you have a beep, beep, beep, beep, you need to have something also blinking, some LED light, some message on screen, okay, some error message on screen, or some attention message on screen, some status message on screen. Should be uh, complemented with the sound because you may not hear the sound because you might be listening to music or you might be deaf. The environment is very noisy sometimes, so you may not hear it. Therefore, it shouldn't be the only output, it should be complementary. However, it is so important and significant. It reduces the, which is a, that is what one on the visual. In the morning, uh, you come to the school and you pass from the gateways, Tunike, right? And when you get your card read, you get your card read, you hear the sound, the usual sound, beep, beep, beep, beep, and you pass. Unfortunately, the sound design in our campus uh, entry system is not good. You cannot differentiate whether it is a good output or bad output. 
because of the tone of the sound. So if the tone of the sound is a positive tone, such as increasing beep, increasing pitch, it is associated with a positive feeling and positive beep, okay, increasing pitch is positive. It reduces the cognitive uh, load because I can assure that I am able to pass and I can force myself from the gate. If you increase, if you decrease the pitch, beep beep, it could be three notes too. Then it is associated with the negative feelings, something going wrong, and you should generate that kind of sound for error and erroneous uh, outcomes. In that case, you don't have to look to the device. You can move on. That is used in Metro too. However, it is not very it is not very successful. There are different sounds for students, for regular ticket owners, for errors, but. What I think is, I don't know what you think. Maybe you can comment on the chat. anything. OK. Uh, so uh, good designed sound signals speed up the performance of the system significantly. So the metro operation becomes more smooth less errors, less people trying to push without having OK from the card, etc. So it provides redundancy in addition to the message on screen. Sound messages can be annoying if improperly used. What does that mean? For example, some setting is not complete, but the equipment is working and you are generating the sound beep, Beep, beep, beep, beep. It cannot be ignored. It keeps beeping. So if, if, if it is improperly used, then it could be annoying. You have to be care you have to be careful. For example, uh, and it has to be pleasing sound. In a cash register. In the supermarkets, whenever you have the barcode scanned, you have a beep. Barcode scanned, beep, beep, beep, beep. OK, fine. But when you have multiple. Multiple uh, cash registers generating all beeps, beeps, beeps. It creates a certain level of noise in the checkout area and it becomes unpleasing. So the sound level and the type of the sound should be selected carefully with pleasing sounds, high, higher pitches and shorter durations. Usually uh, the unpleasing sounds are due to playing the tone for too long. For example, 100 millisecond or 200 millisecond sound beep sounds nice if you go above 0.5 second meaning that 500 millisecond it becomes too long and it starts to irritate However, if you want to irritate, that is the way. Make it long. For example, you need to take action for the engine, engine overheat. So one second, 1000 milliseconds. However, if you code, it has to be very quick. It has to be very quick. If it is 
short, then uh, it is not as annoying as the long ones. So uh, when you are designing interfaces, I am sure you will be designing shortened interfaces in future. Uh, try to make sound feedback outputs as short as possible. Try with the short ones and try with the good tones, selected tones, so that they are perceived as a positive, nice looking, nice sounding, I'm sorry, nice sounding sound. That directly correlates to the quality perception. Quality perception of the user. Good sound is associated with quality and quality perception. There is an actual quality and there is a perceived quality. And users and customers, okay, customers are making their choices based on perceived quality. For example, this is my iPhone. Uh, usually it, it is iPhone 11. Uh, due to the case, it doesn't look like an iPhone. Uh, if it has a good case, good looking case, my quality perception increases, although it is nothing to do with the quality. Perception is important. So sound is very interesting. For example, uh, it is considered important in cars. The famous uh, Turkish consumers door shutting sound. OK, door shutting sound must be good enough. Uh, so that the people so that people will think that the quality is good. Same thing is true for the interfaces. If you are using nice sounding prompt sounds in the interface, the quality perception increases in the electronic equipment as well. Uh, musical notes must be considered, as I said, uh, when designing sound outputs. So increasing pitches are considered, generally considered as uh, positive and decreasings are negative. Also, uh, there is a theory about, uh, if you are interested in music, uh, major and minor uh, of course, uh, three, three. The combination of three notes is called as accord, accord chords. Uh, major chords are associated with happy sounds, and minor uh, chords are associated with unhappy uh, feelings. Generally. Uh, so uh, there are there are tables and books about those if you are going to design an important sound uh, that is interesting and also uh, the perception of the sound is logarithmic just like the light if it increases we become desensitized in a very silent room, small differences can be understood. But if the sound volume is too much, if you increase 10%, you don't even feel it. So the perception is logarithmic. So when you are designing a scale, you should make his you should make logarithmic, inversely logarithmic. Therefore, it will be perceived with equal intervals. Uh, one important factor is the volume knobs. Volume knob, zero and nine. One, two, three, four, let's say five. So at the beginning, the intervals are smaller. Towards the end, intervals are bigger. 
because you perceive it equally. All right. Some professional knobs were like this, but uh, today, since the perception is like this, they do it inversely proportional from the electronics and put equal spaces, equal spaces in front of the device. So when you increase this sound power to 25 percent, um, from 25% from to 50% and from 50% to 75%, they don't get perceived equally. Uh, they perceived logarithmic. So if you go higher, it has not as much big effect. It is loud anyway. Any questions? Maybe we can uh, we can give an assignment uh, for collecting interface sounds. So as a class, we can we can collect a sound library for the interfaces. Teşekkür ederim arkadaşlar kalem açtığınız için. All right, so if you don't have any questions or comments uh, about hearing in the interfaces, it's extremely important what you play as a sound, as an interface sound, boing, ping, bang, boom, whatever. Uh, it's extremely important what you play. Um, when you get back to haptic and tactile interfaces, uh, we move to our sense of touch. Uh, interesting device uh, that is an experimented in England. Uh, there is a rotating rotating knob at the bottom. If you are blind and you check the bottom of the device with your hand, so by understanding how it rotates, how it vibrates, and how it stops, you can be sure about the status of the crosswalk. So if it is rotating, then it says you can cross the street. There is nobody. So detectors are detectors are saying that it is safe to pass, and the red light is shown for the cars. So it's an haptic interface for the for the blind. For the nearby signs, that's that was an experiment though. Uh, for the nearby signs, uh, you can pass, you can pass, or there is a beep uh, signal used in several places in Europe. We don't have it in Turkey. Uh, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep, beep. When it becomes more frequent, you realize that um, you don't have much time left. So it gives the status information with the sound. It was very nice. However, for some places, you cannot use sound. It has to be quiet place, etc. Then uh, other means of sending information. Uh, is tested. It is one of them. Um, touching is not only for blind people. We use our uh, fingers, arms, face, body, foot, a lot. But to start with, there are extreme examples uh, for the blind people. For example, extended letter set, extended letter set for the blind, for the microwave. So usually the microwaves are, have flat interface. And if you are blind, you can't see it. That's also true for the elevators. In the elevators, if you are blind, 
it is very difficult to find where to go because some interfaces are visual and some sleek. Glass. Some sleek glass interfaces are not as good. They look nice, but if you are colorblind, uh, no, not colorblind. If you are blind, uh, it becomes problem. Obviously, uh, in coming years, there will be less and less blind people and more assistive systems for the blind, visual assistive systems for the blind. Uh, and I'm expecting in five to ten years, no, no single blind person will need special treatment, special treatment in the era, in the environment, such as the yellow bands on the street or special characters and braille alphabet in special sections of the interfaces in the elevators. You will not need it because of the assistive, new assistive interfaces that they will use. However, it is not only for the blind people. For example, this is the map. So in the dark, in the dark, we are blind. If we are not looking at, we are blind. For example, I am going to turn on something without looking because I am looking at somewhere else. I am trying to insert something by adjusting. I have to hold it and turn it. So this kind of interface is very nice because I know where it looks visually and, and physically. This one is not as good because visually I know where they are, but by touching by haptic feedback or tactile, uh, I'm going to explain both. Uh, I can't tell where it is. I can only tell by looking. So this is kind of interesting. Touch is also related to quality. We did we did an experiment in the tubing project with Archelic several years ago, 2010, 2011. Um, the quality perception of a haptic interface in the washing machines. The washing machines have big knobs. The perception that we propose is and it was actually it was actually market research result. Um, purchase decisions, many purchase decisions are ba based on two things. One, how does it feel to rotate? Okay, listen carefully. How does it feel to rotate a knob in the washing machine? If if it feels solid, if it is not wobbly, you perceive it as a quality washing machine. If it is cold to touch, cold to touch means it is from, it has some form of aluminum in it so that it makes heat transfer from your fingers. It looks cool and you associated it with quality equipment. Second thing was from that research, the opening door of the dishwasher, uh, opening door of the washing machine. If the opening door of the dish washing machine is solid, then it is associated with the quality. So they actually we they spend a lot of time to increase the quality, uh, classify the quality perception, uh, to increase sales of their. Uh, washing machines, and actually they were successful. <coughs> so mechanical design also. So let's uh, go through that. Uh, touch is not only for disabled people, I, I repeat. 
We use our touch senses frequently in our daily life without realizing we are using it. Keyboard. We use our keyboard, but have you ever tried using glass keyboard where there is no feedback? So the keyboard, keyboard on the phone, which is very difficult. So the feeling of the keyboard, the good laptop, bad laptop, old IBM, old IBM PC keyboard with the mechanical feels. And actually, some of you have mechanical keyboards. I'm sure my son has. Uh, they say uh, it feels better for the programmers. Knobs. When you rotate the knob, you feel where it is and you feel the feedback with your fingers. You don't have to look. Mouse button. Mouse button. It clicks, but if you know nothing, you have to check screen on click went through or this. So it is different. So all the click feedback we sense is crucial in cars, in all settings, and in the computer. I think example is the remote control TV. Keypad is not working. TV is not working. Is it far away? You have all sorts of problems. One solution to this is there are some there are some remotes with that. They put some LED. They put an LED on it. Uh, so when you press the keys, it blinks. It blinks and you realize that the battery is fine and it is taking my press. Then these are eliminated. You focus on last two problems. So it is kind of good, but with the, with the click, with the feeling of the click and the tactile feedback, you can also eliminate this mechanically without LEDs. So you don't have to have LED all the time. You can fix that as well. Now we have to uh, explain that there are two types of uh, physical sense by humans and animals. One is the haptic, other one is the tactile. Tactile means uh, our interaction with our skin. Haptic means our interaction with our muscles. So think about how it feels to touch to a particular cloth, such as a specific curtain or specific surface wood surface or leather okay can you feel the leather with your hand yes can you check the quality of the cloth with your hand yes so it is based on the tip of your fingers so your fingers understand how it is and actually it has a good memory associated with it you can remember certain feelings and certain surfaces from years ago uh, if you touch the similar surface again so tactile that is tactile tactile uh, memory is quite significant in the in human uh, experience you can for example you shake in order to shake one's hand you touch when you touch, you feel the skin of the other person and it all actually 
creates a memory effect. There are interfaces uh, that rely on the tactile uh, interaction. Ones are the switches, tactile switches, and also there are active devices. There is small, small piezoelectric, small vibrating elements on it, so you can generate images and braille alphabets. Braille was easy. Uh, braille alphabets with multiple dots like that. Braille alphabets dynamically, so you can generate dynamic displays, and the people who are blind can sense with their tactile senses, which is fine. There are computer displays for the blind people. But the haptic is more interesting and challenging because it requires force and position. When you are trying to uh, interact with the force and position, you need to go, you need to work with the robotics, robotics uh, technologies. And for example, for two fingers, you attach those actuators to and you can mimic whether you are squeezing some elastic object in three dimensional space. Obviously, that is uh, that is associated with the virtual reality, virtual reality or augmented reality system uh, to complement. So you can have the real sense in a virtual or augmented environment. That is what we call haptic interaction. You can simulate, for example, uh, medical operations. You can simulate uh, repair operations for the engines, for the maintenance, etc. You can also use it for training. You can also attach a monitor to this, for example, a screwdriver. The screwdriver can be attached to a robotic motor, so the person who is holding the actual screwdriver, at, at the end of the screwdriver, there is a motor. Uh, you can do virtual reality or augmented reality screwdriver using training or simulation or game. It could be pliers too. Okay, so it could be any kind of tool at, at being attached and simulated in order to uh, work with mechanics. And that, for example, screwdriver or pointer uh, is usually used for uh, increasing the quality perception of the simulation. One in one uh, simulation, I know, uh, there is a needle. There is a needle. Oh. So, um, the uh, screwdriver, oops, screwdriver or uh, other tools can be used. The tactile keyboards <laughs> that we see are these are the tactile switches. Tactile switch. These switches are very frequent, and when you press, you feel the click. Since you feel the click, you are sure that you pressed it. So the click may not be. Uh, associated with the sound or visual feedback. So these are quite nice. There are very nice keyboards. I think this was an when you press on it individually, you feel that you press once with your finger. So you don't have to look back to the screen, which is very good. Similar thing is very important for the keyboard. Uh, when you press, when you are pressing on keyboards, Look on the screen, your fingers understand that uh, you pressed correctly and you go on. Okay. If you don't have that kind of possibility, 
for example, this keyboard is not as good, maybe it, it could be glass, then you have to look on the screen and monitor your presses because it may press once or twice. One of the one of the famous uh, stories about using tactile keyboards incorrectly is there was a nurse uh, giving medication to I think it was it was kind of a serum uh, 30 milligrams per hour 30 milligrams per hour uh, so the nurse pressed three zero enter but she or he i don't know she or he uh, the nurse hold his finger too long without realizing that zero repeated okay zero repeated and the dosage was 300 instead of 30 and the patient has been i think the patient died in that case uh, because it was an important magic uh, important thing so these kind of uh, medical devices, smart devices and dosage, uh, it could be industrial process. When you are entering a number, uh, additional digits due to pressing the button too long or too short or button bounce, bouncing button problem is very significant thing in micro in embedded systems. There are there are ways to alleviate it but still uh, some systems suffer from it because it's a user operation uh, usually pressing long is uh, pressing long is uh, visible uh, in the older users in the older users, I see that some uh, longer presses, longer press times, uh, as opposed to shorter press times, especially in smart screens. They press too long, okay? They press too long, and then the interface switches to another mode, such as erasing something from the main screen in the tablets. So button press times are variable in the users. Therefore, tactile feedbacks uh, eliminate that to a certain level. Our motor system, uh, forget about the details, but in the brain, this is a very interesting image. This is our brain, this part, the red part the blue part uh, the area spent for each organ is shown and the location is shown so as you see there is a huge area associated with tactile feedback of the tongue so that we can understand what we are eating a lot of space for the mouth a lot of space for the thumb. Thumb is very important. And this is the important part that uh, makes us different from the other animals like chimpanzees and gorillas. They cannot have this much flexibility and dexterity in their thumbs. And therefore, that's a, maybe a coincidence, we have a lot of space dedicated for our thumb in the in the brain and not much space for the foot so these are quite interesting things uh, that relates to how much information i can carry with a particular 
organ. So probably I can carry a lot of information with the tongue and the mouth, some significant information with the hand, but not that much information with the foot, because that part is not as sensitive in terms of the space uh, dedicated to dedicated to the organ. Also, uh, there is a, something going on. Cerebellum, brain sends comments to cerebellum. Cerebellum processes uh, comments and sends it to the body. Some comments are processed in the cerebellum. So if you learn how to do something, some commands are combined and sent to cerebellum as a consequent as a consecutive commands. So they they occur faster, such as playing some instrument. So when you are playing some instrument, certain parts of play, playing instruments, some uh, some gestures are encoded well, so they don't think about it. They think about the abstract part. And the rest is automatically processed by the cerebellum. So for example, double clicking is one of them. When you double click, you don't think about clicking twice. You think about double clicking and you send double clicking command to your cerebellum, cerebellum double clicks. And you have to, you don't have to think about it, as I said. But there is a learning phase, and a few hours maybe. After a few hours, that skill is uh, gained and processed as a whole. So, I'm zooming. These are all. Uh, gestures and they they are recorded as one you don't have to uh, remember as a moment one consequence of <coughs> this is the fit law uh, my phd is on this so i worked on this for about three years or four years. So it's a quite interesting issue. Um, when you are going to click on something, it has to have a size. If the size becomes smaller, clicking becomes difficult. The distance is greater, again difficult, but is there a rule? that defines uh, this process. And uh, basically, yes, uh, there is a correlation, and the correlation is T is equal to time to travel is equal to A plus B log uh, distance over size plus one, generally. And A and B are experimentally determined constants. These constants are dif different for different input devices. For the mouse, it is different. For the trackball, it's different. For the tablet, it's different. A is also different, uh, the response time. It is usually response time, but uh, it is also dependent on other things. And my doctoral thesis was uh, proving that this is not a constant, this is variable, and um, that is uh, dependent on the task parameters. So the direct consequences, small are interesting example. The computer center has a program for faculty uh, 
source info. They have a menu. Block, block, block, block menu. And these are blue. And the letters are white. Some other information. Student something. So it's a secret, there is a screen with menus. They have big boxes, fine, but in order to get it working, you need to click on the text. When you click on here, it doesn't work. You only have to click on text. So that eliminates the performance because you have to adjust yourself to go over the text. And the, the verse is, you expect that clicking on the blue button you expect that the clicking on the blue button will work. You click on button first because it is easy and the fit flow tells that. Okay. So you need to do the second try. So it makes it worse. Even in the second, you say you realize that it only works on the text, not around. This is one consequence of it. So when you are making at clickable regions, make it as wide as possible. Also, when you are placing buttons here at the end of the at the end of the oops at the end of the screen. Okay. A toolbox. You move your mouse very fast and try to do this. The question is, you may go here because you are so fast with the mouse. If you click on here, although there is nothing, you click outside. Therefore, the active regions of these buttons must be bigger than their appearance. So this area must be included in active region so that when you accidentally go over it, or pass, it still accept it as a correct click because there is nothing else in that region. So active regions must be a little bit bigger than uh, the visible shape, especially towards the end of the screen. Some menus are hierarchical menus. You click, move down, click, move down, click, move down. So if the thickness of the menu is not enough, Sometimes you fail, you go back, pull down, click, and multiple level menus are therefore not preferred. Try to avoid, try to avoid hierarchical menus as much as possible. If you have to, try to limit it uh, with the three levels uh, is uh, not good. So our conclusion is uh, we need input and output channels to be able to process information. Uh, the correct things are the capacity reaction time, the usage math, and the other interaction between the channels. For example, there is a noise going on, and then visual channel becomes distracted, or visually there is some distraction and you, the sound channel is affected also as my one of my students studied and phd students studied uh, if you sit your attention channels are relaxed and the capability of attention is increased therefore it is very correct to say that let's sit and talk because standing 
standing is is an inverted pendulum problem it's a control engineering problem human uh, brain spends significant amount of energy and glucose to keep the body up uh, when you are standing because there is a balancing calculation okay when you sit that part of the brain doesn't consume that much sugar that much that much glucose and that much energy so the resources in the brain can be a little bit uh, relaxed for the other activities so it, as i said uh, it is very correct to say let's uh, sit and talk or if not sit hold somewhere hold some bars hold lean to the wall okay so eliminate the balancing need when you eliminate balancing need your brain is relaxed a little bit Okay, uh, any questions? Let's give five minutes break. Uh, I think uh, if, if I have any questions, you can write or say. I'll be happy to. So. I'm going to continue if you have any, uh, if you don't have any uh, things, but let's let's give a couple, couple of minutes break so you may go to the bathroom or take a break or whatever. <clears throat> sorusunuz ya chat penceresi bomboş nasıl yani hocam ya Dorian Dorian Joris hmm. where are you from Uh, we are from France. France. From Epita? Yes. Okay. Are, are you doing fine in here in terms of living? Do you have any issues? Uh, no, we don't have problem. Uh, we just uh, follow okay. course and it's okay. Yeah, it's great. Hocam soruları İngilizce de sorabiliriz de Türkçe de sorabilir miyiz? Tabii ki. Belki o yüzden de çekince olabilir de. Yok ya İngilizceye takmayın. Tarzanca olur, şey olur. Evet. Ana dilde eğitim hakkı var.
What was the train station in Epitav? Was it Village? I've been there once. Sorry, I didn't understand the question. What was the name of the metro station in near Epita? Uh, I don't know because there is many campus and one in Paris and one in Lyon. And uh, I'm in Lyon, so it's, uh, it's not the tallest ah, one. I didn't know that. Uh, what I what I've been in was in uh, the south of the city. It was it was near, I think, Orange Line. Uh, yes, maybe. Okay, we can start. So now. Uh, I'm trying to, exp I will try to explain uh, our memory organization and relating relation to our human memory to interfaces. <coughs> we have in theory and practice three types of memory. It is first uh, proposed in 1999. One is the sensory memory. Other one is the short term memory, then the last one is the long term memory. Short term memory uh, is a scratch pad, whereas buffer. When you close your eye, you keep seeing certain things with your eye. So that is what sensory memory holds. Sometimes you see different colors, different objects, and uh, after image of after image of an object when you close your eyes so that is the effect of sensory memory it's a buffer between the brain and the optical part of the eye so same thing is for haptic and the hearing as well um, short term memory is little better it is short buffer so this and that if i tell you a phone number and expect you write that number down or enter that number to a dialog box you are using short term memory because you will not be re remembering that number next day it's a short buffer there is something in the paper. Uh, by looking at the paper, I am going to I am going to enter that information to the screen. So what I do is I look, enter, look, enter, look, enter. So how do I pay operation? I have to copy it somewhere. So that is what short term memory is. You need to have some kind of buffer, some scratch pad, some clipboard uh, for temporary recall of information, like uh, snails. Uh, even snails have some pre-programmed creatures. Uh, the long-term memory, on the other hand, about uh, is about what we know. Uh, it's a long-term knowledge. Through the uh, through the sensory memory, right? if we pay attention, Very little goes to long term memory. Also, there are contradicting issues, contradicting events that cause to long term memory. 
and that puts you back and eliminates learning. That happens when you are learning in different languages, different keyboard layouts. Uh, we have here, we have French students and they have slight differences in their keyboards. So I'm sure they are having some slight difficulty when they are using our keyboards because some letters have different allocations and space, spaces and positions. Even when you change uh, a computer, uh, the location of the keys and enter keys are slightly when they are slightly different. You are affected because your long term memory expects certain locations and you tend to use that kind of approach and you fail. So long term memory is about what we learn. And. That information is not always accurate. Sensory memory, the, the top. The first layer. Could be vision, visual, oral or touch. Also for. Smelling. Uh, but since human computer interaction is not as improved. To create smells for interaction purposes, uh, many books and many uh, course disciplines omit. We also don't talk about it that much. Uh, how to make uh, interfaces that rely on sniffing and uh, smell, uh, but that could be done, and that could be done as an instrument of virtual reality and augmented reality. And I'm sure we will be able to do it in the near future. There are some existing work as well. But mainly there are echoic, echoic and haptic uh, memories. And <clears throat> constantly, it is constantly overridden by the new information perceived. When you pay attention, and it, they, those are filtered. So sometimes, you look at something, but you don't see it because you are not paying attention. Typical example is security guards. Security guard sitting in front of the monitor. Okay. They have to look at the monitor. But how do we their events? Are they looking at? So it's a very difficult issue. Even if they look at it, they might not see it because they're not paying attention. You have to pay attention in order to get the uh, same thing happens in when you are driving the car by taking a computer program using an interface. You are seeing that, but you are not paying attention, or you have attention eliminating factors. Uh, then they to succeed. For these guys, security guys, we did a project. In the, in the department, we had several different projects. One project was uh, trying to monitor the face of the eyes of the eye positions of the security guard, the security guard, so that when they are not looking at the monitor, individual monitors when they are not looking at the monitors and if there is an important event motion event in one of the video signals when they look back the informed user indicating that hello guy you missed this event and show it briefly so we we find that they didn't look at it 
and replay. That was for looking, but how about attention? We also created another project and on the screens, quad screens, we have displayed small numbers from time. Okay, and we, we asked from time to time, like every every five minutes or so in the random times. Then if they don't respond, we conclude that they are not paying attention. And we report it to the general manager. They don't see that they don't check the numbers, they don't check the random numbers on screen. Therefore, they are paying attention to the monitors. <clears throat> That's possible. So when you pay attention, you switch, you transfer uh, the information to a scratch pad. How big is that? It is basically the, the rules of thumb uh, is seven plus minus two chunks of information. So it is extremely important that we understand the chunk. It is not letter, it is not number, it's something bigger, but the variable size depending on the circumstance. But the seven is the magic number. I will have an interesting example coming. And that scratch pad is very fast. Fast. And decay is also fast. You forget about 200 milliseconds to 30 seconds. You can, you can forget quickly. Therefore, constant replenishment is needed in order to keep it. Uh, if somebody tells you the password, once. So what do you do in order to not to lose it? You keep repeating, you keep repeating, repeating, repeating, repeating, repeating, repeating, repeating until you enter, then you are success successful. You don't still memorize, but by keeping, by keep repeating it, uh, you can hold the information, like refreshing frequently. And radio decay is influenced by information being stored and attentional resources. Also, it is dependent on the age. If you are young, I think it's a little better. Uh, if you get older, uh, the short term memory, capacity of short term memory decreases. It is interesting. Okay. It is interesting when you are reading ticker tape. What is ticker tape? Ticker tape is the exchange, stock exchange information band it flows from right to left in Latin speaking countries. In Arabic countries, it's from the other side. Um, the letters move. It says the president, blah, blah, blah, blah, went to some place. So the new sticker, other kinds of stickers. The ticker is actually longer than the screen, so the information is longer than what you see. In order to understand the context, in order to understand the message, you need to buffer that ticker tape information in your short-term memory and accomplish the combination task and understand. Then you will understand that president went to France. But if your short term memory doesn't work, what you see is president somewhere and some gap, then France and then some explanations, which is done by the president. But you forget what the president, who the president was and it was president. Somebody else explain something else for so you you are disconnected therefore we see that a lot elderly people because their uh, short memory capacity is decreased and they cannot understand ticker tapes 
their short term memory performance is reduced. So how do we solve that problem? You can you can make it double line. Double line ticker tape. You may slow down, but that doesn't help that much because the, by the time they see the other part, the first part was gone. It is very difficult for them. Things. Message pops up. Please. Please do this and do this and do this and click OK. You say fine, click and the message disappears. Now you can't remember what was it. The computer told you something. And at that time you understood it and it was fine. But when you close the window, you forget. So this is very interesting problem. Therefore, you need to keep that kind of messages on screen until they are executed because people forget. Take the street, make a first right, go to the traffic lights, make a left, go until the school, make a right, go straight 300 meters and it is under the tall building, whatever. You say, it, it seems that an easy explanation, you say, okay, start driving your cars and you forget. You forget. So it is difficult. Uh, short term memory, keeping things in short term memory is difficult. And it, it needs assistance. And if, and the in that rely on short term memory, is very demanding, tiring, and difficult. If the requirement for short-term memory, use of short-term memory is minimized, then that interface is easy. When using appliances, people generally look somewhere. I actually explained this. Look at somewhere, then somewhere, and then machine again. What we do with computers are entering information, doing comments and understanding something, realizing something, your mess, your friend, social media, that you realize that he is cursing and you respond. OK, so this kind of an offer to process the information and enter the new one. Therefore, uh, you need to carry temporary information and state knowledge between the states, between different states of the interface, such as the examples are as follows. The bank teller examining our ID card and entering the ID number from ID to computer. So, or, Which one is easy to remember? This one is easy to remember. Therefore, when you are playing with the ID numbers and registration numbers, those kind of numbers, and putting them on the ID cards, you need to separate them in groups because your brain needs to memorize it shortly in short amount of time to look at the card and transfer it to the machine. For example, the IBAN numbers, bank account numbers, you need to group it correctly and with the same system for everybody, memorization is possible. Temporary, mem temporary memorization is possible when they are working. Otherwise, you need to look at twice, three times, or ask if it is the person. You need to ask the person again, again, again, 
first part, middle part, last part, and verify, it becomes difficult because there is no rule about chunking. We call it chunking. Looking at the manual for washing machine and then programming knobs. The manual is inside the, in our previous washing machine, the manual was not on the knob, but inside the door. So in the washing machine instructions are in the door. So you should look at the door, understand, and carry that information to the programming knob. So two-step process that requires that requires short-term memory use. And remember error messages from the previous. Cannot this username is taken. Please choose another name. You go and you click OK. And the next you enter again because you forget what was the one. In that case, you need to repeat the error information in the dialog in the new new uh, screen so that people don't have to remember the error from the previous. For example, you are looking for Agatha Christie novel. You type Agatha Christie to the book bookstore web page. And the message says, sorry, not found. Agatha Christie cannot be found. Do you want to search again? The problem is maybe you typed incorrectly. So in order to eliminate that problem, you need to repeat the original query so that you have to remember what was the previous query. It is already on the screen. So carrying information from, from previous screen is crucial in dialogues. Dialing a telephone number that your mother says, uh, my mother who passed away in 2007 was starting with five. When she said five, then all my model in my uh, phone number memorization model was broken because five shifts everything by one. And I couldn't uh, hold that phone number anymore temporarily. So many people should use the same model for national ID number, passport numbers, student ID numbers, so license plates, all those uh, information should be grouped in a unique way, common way, so that people develop same kind of uh, storage. If there is no visible division, we divide, in a, we divide them in our space. Nobody memorizes this as a mathematical number indicating a 2,354,000. Nobody says that. People chunk it automatically. Okay. And last example is investing in IVR systems, voice operated integrated voice response. Interactive voice response. Um, if you want to talk to Mohammed, press one. If you want to talk to Ufukcan, press two. If you want to talk to Mehmet, press three. If you want to Aisha Gül, press four. If you want to talk to Hassan, press six. If you want to talk to Maria, press seven, etc. And by the time you hear press nine, you start forgetting about what was the selection number one. So there is amount that you can store maximum, and that number is maximum seven. If you exceed seven, uh, people tend to have problems 
Uh, therefore, uh, in order to prevent errors in IVR systems, try to limit the cho choices maximum five and make them deep. But if you don't have that kind of error probability because the users are frequent users, such as branch operators and uh, already using people, uh, like reporting something uh, in, the, in the company, then you can have more choices because they memorize what to, uh, what to press. Then you can have more than 10. In that case, the use will be single, single level or less number of levels. So the operation will be fast, but the error possibility will be higher. So what can we do? We exploit chunking. So instead of using this, uh, instead of using this, try to chunk it. Chunk size is generally accepted as three, four letters uh, in random. Meaningful chunks are uh, more memorizable, such as 34, uh, GTU, 41. So this license uh, plate is more easily uh, transferable to scratchpad because your existing mental model has 34, GTU, and 41. This is for Kojeli, and this is for the Istanbul. So it meaning chunks are more easily stored. Letters are usually better than numbers. Uh, if you chunk, try to chunk letters and numerals separately. From time to time, in two-factor authentication mechanisms, do you always do you use two-factor authentication? The question is yes. The answer is yes. When using two-factor authentication, people send code. Some genius but some genius programmers send mixed and numbers uppercase lowercase as two-factor authentication codes it is wrong because two-factor authentication codes are not passwords you can't get them because they have short lives. They are valid for 16 seconds or one minute or two minutes. Therefore, memorization or dictionary attacks are not possible with those codes. Do you, do you know Google two-factor authentication? Probably yes. From time to time, it sometimes asks six digit number or sometimes two digit number. Two digit number, right? Do you do this, Demon? That two digit number is easy to remember temporarily. But as a mistake, if you send ALW79% XU as the as the two factor authentication authentication SMS code it is no good because you cannot type it on computer screen at once you have to look many many times which is incorrect because that affects your short-term memory significantly badly. Use visual and verbal meaningful chunks. Reduce, if possible, reduce 
external attention grabbing factors provide important information from previous screen to the current screen. Don't require people to memorize information from previous screens in the interaction. If they have to remember, put it on the screen. These measures can reduce short-term memory load, and at the end of the day, cognitive resources are less spent, and at the end of the day, people say that this interface is better. Okay, what is going on here? This is a good example of chunking. This girl comes. What do you want, sir? You don't know. And I will say, what do you have? So it's an interesting dialogue because she cannot explain everything in the restaurant. Um, hold on a second. I will give you a link. There is a famous restaurant comic. Okay. I think I'll. Okay. I will only share. The link. Okay. So <clears throat> okay. So remembering what you asked is very difficult and uh, waitresses are usually have problems remembering who ordered what and they make errors in order to prevent those errors they use slight notebooks even if they use slight notebooks they come back and who wanted who wanted coca-cola they know that Coca-Cola is asked, but who wanted it? So it's very difficult. When you are ordering fast food from the, from, from the uh, restaurant, usually there is a many organization. Some things, some other things, some other things. In the printed menu also, it is group. It is not like an Excel sheet. There is a group. There are multiple groups. Therefore, you focus on one group, process the group, and go over to the next group. Process the group, go over to the next group. Therefore, we use efficient uh, short-term memory. Short-term memory efficiency is increased. Without menus, it will be impossible to select the food. Therefore, for the similar reason, we use menus in the interfaces. And the name of the thing is exactly called as menu. So the, the word menu is then computer. So the menu word is older, so it's full menu, right? What's on the menu? So we use the same 
analogy for the interfaces. Everything we know uh, is stored in long term memory. By learning, reading and training. By experience. It is slower than the short term memory, so it is like a hard drive. Long term memory does not contain exact and complete information. New information is written into old, old information, so it is not like a hard drive. It is more like a neural network storage which is actually neural network storage there is an ambiguity in incompleteness if new is consistent with the old information what is that reinforcement learning so it is reinforced otherwise there is inter there are interference you, if your data set is contradictory your success your uh, model success is reduced in artificial intelligence problems because there is no reinforcement. It is actually worse. When you are under remote, you will have a lot of problems because the way they work is sometimes different. So when you switch, what you learn has adverse effect. Adverse effect. So how to understand long term memory the information in long term memory and the organization of the in the brain determines the mental model. Mental model is the keyword. In explaining but nobody wants to hit. They are not. So why did they have that kind of thinking? Or behavior? Because they, they, they, they find it proper, they find it correct, but it is incorrect. So through the experiments, experiments, modern long-term memory can be studied. Who sees the young lady and old lady in the first image? Let me make Let me make a call. So please like in the chat area. Which one do you see most in the first image? Okay, most of you see young ladies. Okay, all ladies are also coming. So, why do we see different our previous experiences? Uh, create our mental model about images. So when we approach an image, our mental model try to process the image. So similarly, we have a mental model and procedure in our mind. So we based on our mental model. In one of the TV series, I think it was Avrupa Yakasa. In one of the Turkish TV series, and the guys were about to oil the computer. The one of them asked, "Is it time to oil? Is it, was it time to oil change the computer?" And the other said, "Maybe yes." And we haven't changed the oil for a long time. Uh, obviously, it was a joke, but uh, what they but it implies is if you have the incorrect mental model you take the computer and go and try to change the oil because your mental model says so. Obviously it was a joke, but that is how we approach software and hardware based on our mental models. 
So in the long-term memory, long-term memory creates the mental models. When I go to France, my mental model about France is what? The, the tower, right? The river, and the food. Maybe there are other things more important, but I don't remember my mental model about uh, the city is like that. So uh, my behavior is determined by that mental model. When something is given to you, it is easier to choose between. Otherwise, you have to remember. And you have to remember, it's more difficult. Remembering is associated with the long term memory. So we say knowledge in the head, such as command prompts. If the knowledge is presented, it is called as knowledge in the world. It is Jacob Nielsen's terminology. So any kind of menu in the restaurant menu too. Knowledge in the world, knowledge in the world, knowledge in the world. So you choose. You don't have to remember. Therefore, it is easy. We call them recognition. The other one is recall. You have to remember. This is more difficult and taking long to longer time. So recognition based interfaces as follows. You go to the restaurant. What would you like, sir? Like every time, you don't know every time. Unfortunately, you have been going to the same restaurant for years without knowing that their famous piece in their menu. It happened to me. There was an interesting menu element, but it was a uh, standard shop in Tuzla. Tuzla uh, Kerfteci. Uh, they are closed actually. Um, at one day, in one day, I asked, him, and in the menu there was an interesting option. So that means it is and more efficient and successful to select from one choices to remember what was uh, available. And obviously, there are things and user interfaces based on recognition must be preferred. Recognition is way. It doesn't have to be pulled down many. It could be any kind of open menus, buttons, picture menus, these kind of buttons. This is recall. This is the buttons, functions are on the button. So you search for the function and you press the button. I, am, I have five more minutes to go. So <clears throat> anything that we see, must be processed and it is not free. Our brain works with sugar and it has limited resources. And at the end of the day, we get tired. We, we need to sleep, sleep. Uh, so it's not free. So processing difficulty of the visual scene depends on the complexity of the visual scene and our previous memory of the scene. If we have seen it before, is much better. Therefore, we have seen something like this and we perceive it as something round in the middle. So it is in the middle. Here, based on the gestalt laws, there is a snake here, or these are connected. 
principle of continuity because it continues objects. And again, to, we see two things like this in the picture. We visualize that. There are objects like that. It is not a stereo image. We don't have that perception because it's a 2D image on the screen. There is no 3D uh, stereo. Uh, it's a 3D image, but 2D projection, so it's not stereo. Therefore, uh, our brain processes it. What is behind, what is front? If we are familiar, if you have, if you are Chinese reader, the familiar is the same. But if you are not Chinese, you don't remember it as much. The processing of the scenes, scenes uh, are interesting. There are a number of unique elements in the interface in the scene. So when you try to memorize this, when you try to memorize this house, individual pieces go to each different neurons. When multiple layers are as multiple layers are involved in artificial neural network nodes, each layer is responsible from each layer is responsible from different parts, different functions. So it is similar to that. Different objects are remembered differently. So when you try to remember, when you try to remember back, you try to combine those different features. You never record it as a single element. You, you record it as combinations of multiple elements. Have you tried generating images with the Microsoft Bing? Bing ile resim yaptınız mı? Probably yes. Bing, for example, remembers things this way, I think, relatively this way. It doesn't remember exactly. It, it kind of it kinds of fakes it to a degree that is similar, but not quite because the whole. We forget, we make mistakes, learning is guided by previous knowledge, different in our abilities and working styles, and we don't want to be stupid against the machine. Machine always needs to obey person, not the way around. There are different motivation and attention levels in different times. Not everybody is working in office. Sometimes we are outside. Sometimes there is a car yelling. So motivations are present. Sometimes it's a military computer and the computer is used in the fire. So attention is very different. And we have to be the boss of the interaction not the slave of the interaction. We have to be boss. If the interface tries to make, uh, tries to make obedient, then uh, we like it. We have to be the boss. Therefore, we have to direct the interaction, not the other way around. Um, last slide. Then we have well-practiced skills. It is very difficult to overcome that. It's very difficult to change it, for example, writing skills using some application. So how that skills affect application usage is a question of studies. And user testing is one way of determining, determining how our designs relate our skills. We have skills, computer usage skills, and we have designs. Design and skill uh, interaction can only be tested by, not only, but mainly tested by 
user testing. And here we see a usability laboratory. Uh, there is a one-way mirror. Sometimes camera can suffice. Uh, there is a task. User is performing the task and the uh, experimenters are following what he is doing and recording, take notes, etc. So this is how a traditional user, traditional usability laboratory looks like. I'm going to stop here. Uh, I hope you enjoy the class. Um, stopping the and if you have questions or comments, uh,